there too. Let's see here. Let's see who comes in to join us. Yeah. The thing with those sessions is they just kind of go on and on and on and on. We have on there is like, whoa. Leona, or ever faithful from the VVI. Hi, thank you for joining us. I love it. She's always right on time. <laughs> yeah. Was there curfew tonight? Is curfew still going on? It's still going on, right? What time is curfew? I don't even know anymore. It's six o'clock. Is it six? Okay. I've, I've kind of lost track. I guess since I'm always home, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> always. <laughs> <laughs> Spend most of my time. Six thirty and two two p.m. tomorrow. Oh, is it tomorrow? Is two again? Is it yeah. always two on Sundays? I thought. Was, oh, it's good. I thought it was a holiday thing. It was two o'clock on Sundays. So, a browser for two o'clock on Sundays. Yeah, two o'clock oh. on Sundays. Okay. No, I mean I have plenty to do. Good night, anybody. I see a couple other people join in and send us a quick hi so we know who's online. I see we have a couple other people. So say your good nights when you come in so we know you're there. Hi, Mr. McCool. How are you? Thanks for joining us. So guys, as you come on, just say, put in your little hellos so we know who's here. This format is, a, is different. We've been using it for a while, but it's different because it doesn't. Like on Instagram, you'd see the names coming in. But with this right. one, I somebody puts a message in the chat half the time. We don't see who comes in. Very good. How's Canada? Let's see who else comes in. All our ever faithful people, every Saturday night, we love you guys. Oh, my one brother is on the line. Hello, my one brother. <laughs> That's Dane. Everybody, Dane's my brother. Everybody say hello to Dane. <laughs> A lot of people think we're twins. We're not. We're 17 months apart, but they always think we're twins. <laughs> it's cold, Mr. McCook. Really? It's almost summer. Why is it cold? Hi, Howard. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you're on YouTube tonight. Nice. Awesome. So, Mr. Mr. McCook, I think, Dane, I think Mr. McCook is telling you hello. Respond. Our mother taught us manners. <laughs> Hi, Leon. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. This is great. Hey, Trudy and team. Yes. <laughs> it takes a team. It takes a team. <laughs> awesome. We're going to have a good one tonight, guys. Accounting 101. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I go through that with my accountant in the U.S. all the time. You know, I spaz out every every year when tax time. She's like, Trudy, take a deep breath. And we go through the same thing every year. What's the deal? <laughs> Dane, how are you saying hello? Make sure you respond to Howard. Keeping everybody interacting with each other here. We'll hold on a little bit longer. Let's see who else joins us. Dane, were you online last night? Yesterday, I guess. I, I think you were. I couldn't really see what was going on, but I think you were online yesterday. Santiago, welcome. Thank you for joining us. So I hope you guys have your pen and paper out. Or note that I should say, because we're going to get a lot of good information today. I have mine. Here's my pen. Here's my notepad. Going to be taking notes today. <laughs> good. Did you stay the whole time, Dane? It went a whole lot longer than I anticipated. <laughs> All right. Ooh, we're at fifteen. I think we're at a good number. So, Mr. Williams, welcome back. You guys. Remember, Ken, 
Thank you. Hey. So, yeah, Kenneth was with us. Okay, cool. Kenneth was on, gosh, Kenneth, how long ago? Earlier this year. Can't yeah, it was in March. In March? Okay, time flies when you have having fun. And Kenneth told us about the Rock Springs Project. I don't know if you guys remember that whole discussion. Really interesting program that's going on. Um, just to refresh your mind, you guys can go back online and check them out. But it's a really cool program. Actually, a model that I like so much that I would, uh, we were recommended that everybody should check them out because it could be a model that we could all create some way, shape, or form in our little community or our little world. But it's a really super cool project. But during that discussion, I discovered that Mr. Kenneth knows a lot about accounting. <laughs> Hi, Adenai. I hope I said that wrong. Welcome. Sorry if I butchered your name. So sorry. Um, so something that I just told you guys a little bit of, um, earlier, I have a lot of challenges with accounting. I do it. I do fine. I just wish I did better at it. I always want to do better and learn more. So we're going to take this time and talk to Mr. Kenneth and talk about Farming 101, because a lot of us are farming. Many of us have a little side thing, a little side hustle. Some of us, yes, it's actually a business, um, but we want to make sure that we are making money, okay? So um, especially those of us who want it for business. And for those of us that's a side hustle or hobby, you might even check the numbers like, hey, I'm actually making money at this, so let me go ahead and you know formalize this as a business. So. Mr. Kenneth, I'm going to throw the ball to you and let you decide wh where do you want to start with this discussion? What's the first thing you want to, first topic you want to talk about to get us started? All right. So I think we can start with basically a basic definition of accounting, mm -hmm. right? And we can start by saying it is the process of basically just keeping some financial records or we can say it's the art of recording, classifying, and summarizing financial transactions. Okay. So we are recording, we're classifying, mm -hmm. and we're summarizing. Okay. And there is another aspect to it where we analyze, which would be, you know, at the tail end. And some of the time, the accountant may not be the person who do the analysis. It might be your financial analyst who analyze those numbers and you know come up with various ratios and could basically look at the numbers and tell a story in terms of how your operation is proceeding. And, you know, I kind of like to tell people that when I look at numbers, numbers tell me a story. Yes. So, so I can look at the numbers in terms of um, your operation and it tells me exactly what is happening there. Mm -hmm. um, so from this definition, you can see that in terms of accounting, we're only interested in those things that we can measure in terms of dollar values. We're not interested in the other things that takes place on the farm. So if two workers are not in agreement, they're not speaking with each other, we're not concerned with that. However, if that leads to something that might cost the business money, yes. we're interested in that. Absolutely. And we try to measure that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if um, as I said, two workers not speaking, or, you know, if one goat is not in harmony with another goat, we're not interested in, in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if one goat costs us to lose money, <laughs> we're certainly interested in that. <laughs> yes. Or if one right? gets, well, gets out and beats up the other one, we had that hey, like two exactly. nights ago. Really. Because we, now we have to call in the vet, and yes. there's a cost there. And therefore, we have to record that cost. Absolutely. So in accounting, we have a principle that we call the double entry principle. Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people likes to say that accounting is a substitute for math or for mathematics. It's not. It has its own principle and it's 
different from mathematics. However, we from time to time may rely on mathematics to, to explain what we do. Mm -hmm. And this principle that we have in accounting that we call the double entry principle and all that it basically states is that your assets must be equal to your liability plus capital. Okay. And so the question is, what are assets? And of course, assets would be anything that we own. Example? And in that distinction, we can have both fixed assets and okay. current assets. So anything that we own, we own goods, that's an asset. We own motor vehicles, that's an asset. But the classification in terms of what is fixed asset and what is current asset will determine or will be dependent on the nature of the item. So if we have some kids that we intend to sell within three months, or under a year, those are classified as our current asset. Okay. But if we have Billy on the farm and we're gonna be using Billy to breed and Billy will be there for probably five, six years, then Billy now become what we call a fixed asset okay. because he'll be there for more than a year. So what is classified as fixed asset or current asset is dependent on the nature of the business. Mm -hmm. So if I operate a car business, mm -hmm. to me, most of the cars that I buy and sell would be current asset. I don't intend to keep them for long. But I might have one motor vehicle in the fleet or two that I'll be using to do the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And therefore, that will be a fixed asset. So it is not a hard and fast rule to say, oh, motor vehicles are fixed assets and goods are current assets. Mm -hmm. It depends on how long we intend to keep it. And then some people will say, okay, anything below a certain value is not classified as fixed asset. Because if I have something that it only value $10,000, I might not classify it as a fixed asset. But if it's over $100,000, I might classify it as a fixed asset. Okay, so Mr. McCook asked you to repeat, I think, the fixed assets versus the current asset and give us examples of each of them. Okay, so fixed assets is anything that the business intend to keep for more than a year. Current asset would be for under one year. So it's anything that the business own <clears throat> and intend to keep in its operation for a year or more, that's fixed. Mm -hmm. Anything that it owns and it intends to keep for less than a year, that would be current. Okay. okay. All right. Um, note that assets are what we call deferred expenses though. Okay. Because although you have it as an asset every year, it actually loses value. Mm -hmm. Every year there's a cost or a write-off on that asset. So if you buy a motor vehicle this year, it's a 2021 or a 2022 motor vehicle, spanking new. I'm a farmer, by I can't afford that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. By the time you drive it, it's going to lose value. And therefore, we have to write off some of those values each year. And that write-off of that asset is what we call depreciation. Mm -hmm. So it's a reduction in the value of the asset every year. What's that percentage? Is it Does it vary depending on what the it, it item is? Like cars is one thing, equipment something else? Right. So like um, as a rule, if it's a computer and computer software, and because of the nature of computers and the technology, and every year you probably have new technology coming out. Mm -hmm. We write off a computer like within three years. Yeah. A car, we might write it off in five years. Okay. A building, we might write it off in say 
10, 15 years. And the government has um, rules that it applies in terms of the, depending on the nature of the asset, how long they will allow you to write it off. Okay. But that's a different thing that we're not going to go into tonight because that, that, okay. that's the way. <laughs> All right. So we say assets equal liability plus capital. Liability is anything that we owe. And again, if we owe somebody for more than a year, that's a long-term liability. If we owe somebody for less than a year, that's what we call a current liability. So if we buy feed on credit from IPRO, it's almost a must that IPRO will want their money within less than a year. As I said, they have never given me any feed on credit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so that would be a current liability. But if we borrow some money from the bank to expand the business, that's a long-term liability. All right? Um, capital, no. And in some business, the name capital could be substituted for what we call shares, ordinary shares. Capital is anything that the owner puts into the business. And note, in law, the business is separate from the owner. In other words, the business can do business with the owner. The business can sue the owner. Likewise, the owner can sue the business because in law, we see both as different persons. But don't you have to be structured that way? What if you're working well, as a sole proprietor? Is it still if, too It's still separate. The only thing with being a sole trader is that somebody can sue you not only for the debts of the business, but they can actually take away your personal asset to satisfy the debt of the business. Okay. But when you have a, a company, there is that word behind the name of your company, and it's LTD, limited. Mm -hmm. It means that if the company owes somebody $20 million, Mm -hmm. and the company can only pay $2 million, then the person will only get $2 million, and that's it. But if it's a sole trader or a partnership, and the company or the, the sole trader and the partnership owes the person $20 million, the person can collect $2 million from the, the entity, and then the, per, the person can go to the sole trader's personal account and get the balance of 18 million dollars so that's a good o2 you should seriously consider having limited, limited liability, liability company yes and not just keep stuff in your name exactly for a partnership the only partner that has limited liability is the one that we call the sleeping partner I heard of that one and a sleeping partner is basically somebody who invests in the business. Oh, I know. Silent partner. Is that the same thing as a silent partner? Okay, okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. He okay. is not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he has what we call limited liability. Okay. So it's always good for you to protect yes. your personal assets yes. by having a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. rather than being a sole trader or a partnership. That's of course, so both of them have adva some advantage too. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's a sole trader, um, you would be entitled to the income tax threshold, which is about $1.5 million now, mm -hmm. as a write-off. Okay. But as a company, you would not be entitled to that. 
<laughs> we're going to do more business than that anyway. We're all planning our, our goals right. are much higher than that. So we're good. <laughs> yeah. So so taking you back to this double entry principle. Okay. Where we say assets equal liability plus capital. All that is saying to you is that for every transaction that we do, mm -hmm. there are two sides to the transaction. There is a right side and a left side. In accounts, we call it a debit and a credit. And therefore, what you as the accountant is expected to do for every transaction is to debit something and credit something else. Mm -hmm. And once you're doing that, then it means that your accounts will always be in, in balance. Okay. But of course, you can still do that, and it's not necessarily correct. And we can go into that because you can debit the wrong thing and credit the wrong thing. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're correct if you do that. But that's the principle. That's the first principle of accounts. Every transaction has two sides: a debit and a credit. Can you give us an example of a debit and an example of a credit? All right. So I am going to buy feed for the animals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be drawing a check. So I am reducing my bank account balance. And bank account balances normally are debits. Okay. So if I want to reduce an account that has a debit balance, I would credit it. And that would reduce it. So bank would be credited. And since I'm getting feed, and I can call feed inventory, mm -hmm. right? That would be debited because I am in increasing my feed stock. Okay. All right. So everything that we do, one set of accounts is affected by a debit mm -hmm. and the other set is affected by a credit. All right. Mm -hmm. And right through the accounting process, that's basically what we're doing. We're debiting and crediting accounts. Now, the good thing for us is that we have accounting softwares. That's good. See, that can do this for us because I need a software. <laughs> I yeah. need software. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> yeah, we we have accounting software, and one of the cheapest one on the on the market would be your QuickBooks. Yeah, I love QuickBooks. Yeah, so your QuickBooks, and what your QuickBooks will do for you when you enter each transaction, mm -hmm. it will summarize things for you, and it will give you reports. In accounting, we have three main financial statements that we use. Mm -hmm. Your profit and loss. Yes. And some of us call that income statement. Mm -hmm. Your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And your cash flow statement. Run those and reports all the time. <laughs> I don't know what right. see. I just run the reports. <laughs> and a lot of people will tell you that very few business fail because of lack of profit. Most business fail because of cash flows, cash flow issue. And therefore, the cash flow, although it's not used widely by a lot of people, is a very important statement mm -hmm. for you to use so that you can predict where you're going to have excess cash and also where you're going to have your deficit in terms of cash. And therefore, that might be a good time for you to start speaking with your banker if you're going to have a deficit. And if you have excess, it's a good time to probably speak with your investment manager mm -hmm. so you can know what to do with all of that excess. So as I said, for me, QuickBooks is very good, but 
the QuickBook online is even better. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, QuickBook Pro, and the cost for QuickBooks could be like about 400 US dollars. Yeah. And but each year, each year you pay a, a like a subscription to, you know, make sure that you get all the updates and all the assistance that you need. If you have a problem, you can link them, you know, online and they'll answer and all of that stuff. The good thing with QuickBook with the online version is that you don't have to go out and buy a server and manually back up things. The online back it up on the cloud and therefore you can be anywhere log on using any computer mm -hmm. and basically get information yeah. in order to wait in there. Um, it's very easy to figure out what's it, going on. It's very easy to use and it have a number of, um, as I say, report. Um, and also your accountant can be in a remote location. Yes. And he will be able to use it. So you're in St. Mary, Trudy. Mm -hmm. I would not need to come to St. Mary every time to update your records. I could be in Kingston. I could be in, on the beach in Negril. Ritz Cafe. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could be there getting on bad. <laughs> and, whatever, I forgot what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mr. McCook, I could be updated. There are different versions of QuickBook too, because you have like the Jamaican version, there's Canada has a version. I think just about most countries have a version of QuickBooks that you can use, and you can also have multi users. Exactly. You're zero, right. You can zero, you're one zero. user, three users, five users. Yeah. You know. And I went online and I saw that they're having they're having some discount right now. Yes. As we speak. And 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 they have discount on a regular basis. And some of the things, some of the modules that you will get from them, you'll get your vendors. So you know your employee payroll. I tend not to use a payroll, yeah. you know, because as you say, you know, you have to modify it somewhat mm -hmm. to fit your Jamaican situation. So I tend not to use the payroll, the banking for you to do your bank reconciliation statements every month. Mm -hmm. So you can know which checks hit your bank account. Mm -hmm. Of course, I would also suggest that that is something that you should check almost every day. Yeah. If you have a bank account, make sure you're online and mm -hmm. you can check, you know, what is happening to your account almost daily. Um, you have various reports, your balance sheets, mm -hmm. right? And your balance sheet is just basically a list of your assets and your liabilities along with your capital, as I mentioned. Um, you have your customers, so you can get your sales figure. You can know who owe you, which is your accounts receivable, how long these people owe you for, you know, if it's under 30 days. And hopefully you wouldn't be giving anybody more than 30 days credit, if at all any. <laughs> but that's another argument. You have, your, you have your vendors, your receivables, your payables, all of these things. Um, you can get from your your QuickBook. Not sure if there are any questions. Um, I have a question until we look to see. You guys, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. And until I see one, I have a question. Are you using the Jamaica version of QuickBooks or the U.S. version? Which one are you using? Well, I use the U.S. version because not that there is any thing special about that right now mm -hmm. because all that I would do is in terms of my chart of accounts mm -hmm. I would basically fit my chart of accounts to mirror my operation Okay. right and the good thing with the chart of accounts say for instance you operate a farm with a number of activities so you have pig, you have goat you have cow, you have agriculture 
-hmm. you can set up your chart of accounts in such a way that you can get all of these reports that I mentioned before, your um, balance sheet, your profit and loss account on what is happening with the pig mm -hmm. area. What is happening with the goat area? What is happening with the cow? What is happening in the agriculture? And therefore, you can know if you're making profits in any one of these areas. And it's as simple thing as just using numbers. Like, for instance, I normally start, my assets always start with one. My liabilities always start with two my capital three and so on down the line, four, five, my expenses is five, you know, and so on down the line. And the chart of account is such that you have the numbers following the one, the two, the three, and the four and five. You can determine how many numbers you want there. So therefore, I'm doing good. I might say good is five, zero. And I can have any any numbers after the five and the zero. Okay. Pig, pig would be five one, and I could have any number following that one. Agriculture could be five two, any number following the two, and so on. And therefore, when I want to run my profit and loss account to give me just what is happening in terms of the pigs, mm -hmm. I could just basically select those accounts. And I could run it. I like that tracking system. That good. Yeah. I just name them. I don't really categorize them. So you can I'm, use the yeah. You can use the the chart of accounts using numbers okay. to just basically categorize them like that. I like that. I really yeah. Do. And so if you know, it's easy. Or if you want, you can set up more than one account and um, one company in mm -hmm. in QuickBooks, mm -hmm. and therefore you could treat each part of your business as oh. a company within itself. I like that idea. And therefore, you could get and you know for sure reports on, on, uh, on that. So QuickBooks is basically what I would suggest for small business. There are other um, accounting packages out there. I would teach trees one that that very good with inventory yeah. and it has you know mm -hmm. some nice controls mm -hmm. in it but it is a bit expensive okay a, a pack is also another one that is usually expensive and now, therefore omar mentioned zeros x-e-r-o i've never heard of that one he said that one is good as well you see he had mentioned it a little bit earlier so, I mean, I didn't know that there were that many. Yeah, zero is good as well. A zero, yeah, okay. I spell zero. <laughs> so that's a new one on me. Thank you, Omar, for sharing that. Very yeah. Good. So there's several yeah. options out there. Several options out there that, you know, um, but the important thing for you, and even if you're not, say, an accountant per se, mm -hmm. it's basically to record the information. Okay. So, yeah. I'm sorry. So that's a good segue. So here's a question that says, what size farm would you recommend to use QuickBooks or other accounting software? In other words, when does it make sense to, the invest, to do that investment as, for, as part of either doing it manually, like an Excel spreadsheet, or make, when do you think it's a good time to make that switch? All right. So your Excel, your Excel spreadsheet is something that you can use. Mm hmm but that can be really time consuming. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Say, I want to know um, what's the unit cost of feeding my animals mm -hmm. and say feeding my goats. Um, that is something that really could be because there are a number of different things that would go into the cost mm -hmm. 
of maintaining one animal. You know, it would be your salaries, you would apportion some of your water bill because goats drink water, um, you know, your electricity, mm -hmm. all of those costs you would have to apportion. And then to use Excel and do that, unless you actually know to use some of those Excel functions. Yeah, it's really hard if you don't. You know, it's really hard. You know, um, and some of those functions are not easy to learn. No. So mm -mm. for me, $400 initial outlay and then probably 50 US dollars every mm -hmm. year after that mm -hmm. to get storage facility because that's huge for me. The fact that I'm getting cloud storage. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if I lose all my information on my laptop. It, don't, it doesn't matter if somebody steal my laptop. That information is there in the cloud and I can always get it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy a server and use that to store my information and then all different kind of things can happen to that server. Mm -hmm. So that to me is, is huge and is worth that 400 US dollars initial outlay and that $50 every wait near me. Um, I know you have persons in Jamaica who probably will buy QuickBooks and they might have four, three user, five user mm -hmm. and you could probably get a copy from them to also use that, yeah. you know, so that could be something that, you know, a group of farmers could probably think about. That's a good idea. A group could yeah. get together. Yeah. So a group of people could, you know, come together mm -hmm. and you could buy that. And it therefore means that each person, you know, if it's a five user, you could share that. And therefore each one of you would have your company set up mm -hmm. on that. Um, just that one um, quick, quick book pro that was purchased. And so, and everybody can have their own username and password. So one person can. Well, exactly. Like okay. Yeah. And therefore I would only have access to my company. You would only have access to your company and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that could be something that persons could look at. Yeah. And, and adding to categorizing based on the different industries, so to speak on your farm, the milk thing is coming up every day. It's like I was told today that I need to start factoring in my iodine that I'm using. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's lots of cause. I mean, there's some something as simple as a lot more water as you're washing yeah. all the time and you're sterilizing. There's dishwashing liquid and you wash their are gloves every day because every time we milk an animal, we change the gloves. So that's 10, 12 gloves a day easily. Yeah. Okay. So all these things add up. So now we have to quantify all those things to make sure that when we do sell the milk, we're actually making a profit on it. So it's yeah. So the good thing, the good thing about that is that we have a concept that we use in accounting that we call materiality. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there is this DJ that used to come on the radio, I think Richie B. And okay. he used to basically say, we don't make a big thing out of a little thing. We make mm -hmm. a big thing out of a big thing. So take, for instance, your iodine that you use. Um, each time you use it, there's a cost. Yeah. But the cost of the bottle might not be all that significant. So in accounting, we wouldn't account for it each time that we use it. That's true. Once we buy the bottle of iodine, we just expense it immediately. Yes, absolutely. Because it's not a significant cost. Mm -hmm. So we don't bother ourselves with, you know, I mean, if I buy a pen and the pen costs $100, each time that I write with it, there is a cost. <laughs> so yeah. I wouldn't expense each time that I write with it. I just expense the pen one yeah. time. Yeah. And so we can do that with small items, you know, um, in some of your dewormers and those things still cost a lot of money when you add it up yeah. over time. But, you know, each time that you buy a bottle, you know, the cost okay. is not that significant and therefore you can expense it almost immediately. But again, you would expense that your milking operation. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, the reason I bring that up is just to make sure that everybody's thinking about everything. Because you say, like, oh, some people are like, oh, it's just water or oh, it's just this washing liquid. But it does add up over time. So yeah, exactly. you're going to quantify that. And then what yeah. time is yeah. And if you really want to know what is happening on each segment of your business, because I mean, some of the time we spend a lot of time on the segment that is really not giving us the bang for the buck. True. You know, it's the 80 20 rule. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we spend 80% of the time on the activities that is only generating 20% of our business. Yes. You know, so we want the accounting information that can actually give us, you know, analyze that and tell us exactly, you know, are we making profits on this operation? You know, should we end this operation or should we revamp somewhat, you know, rewind and come again? Um, You know, and it's only when we look at the numbers for a number of people, um, a number of persons, I, I realize when it come on to accounting, we're like, accounting not add no value to the business. And therefore, you know, why? But the accounting, when the accountant does the numbers for you, mm-hmm. it actually tells you a story. Tells a story. You know? Yeah, I remember I remember going to an operation and, and, and you know, the person had a problem in terms of there were some things going missing each month, mm-hmm. <clears throat> right? And the person just couldn't understand it because the sales was not reflecting the purchases. So the purchases would be much greater than the sales. And my question to the person was, do you do monthly inventory? No. I said, do you know that some of your goods might be coming out of your business in the garbage? That's true. The person was like, what do you mean? I'm like, okay, take for instance your chicken. Somebody would probably wrap that chicken in 10 different plastic bags and put it in the garbage and have a relationship with the garbage collector. And the garbage collector would collect the garbage Chickens would be going out, and when the garbage collector reach up the road, those chickens will be handed over to somebody. All those 10 layers of plastic would be taken off, and that chicken is good. Probably dinner for somebody, or it's sold. And you, the business owner, you're losing money. Yes. Um, I used to work with Kraft Foods, and I remember one day I went into the factory, and I heard somebody say, we are going to make some rejects. I'm like, how do you make rejects? You're supposed to make biscuits. And if the biscuits are not of a certain standard, that's when you have rejects. Mm-hmm. But the persons were deliberately making rejects. Wow. And when we check it out, what happened is that there was a primary school up the road. And so when they make these rejects, and they put it in this big plastic bag. And the garbage guys come for it. When the guy, garbage guys reach up to the primary school, there are some vendors at the school gate that would take the bags from yeah. the garbage truck. And they would take those biscuits home. And they would repackage them into small see-through bags. And they would sell them for about half of what we, the manufacturers, were selling it for. Wow. And so what we did, we put in an incinerator. All rejects were burnt. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, again, we had was to protect our name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the biscuits had the name of the biscuit and the name of the company on it. Mm-hmm. Right? And therefore, those were being sold under mm-hmm. conditions that were not ideal. Wow. You um, know, so... Uh, yeah, the, the numbers are very important, but as I said, and especially once we reach to that level now where we are above that $10 million threshold mm-hmm. and we now start filing GCT returns. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of what we do now as farmers, we're paying GCT to the government mm-hmm. 
-hmm. but we 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 cannot charge GCT to our customers because we're not at that ten million dollar threshold. So once we have expanded and we are at that ten million dollar threshold, and we have to file those GCT returns every month, then our accounting records become even more important because the GCT is one area where the penalties could kill you. Yeah. Um, if if your GCT is say half a million dollars each month, and you file late, the first charge that hit you is a 40% charge of half a million dollars. If it's $10 million, it's 40% of $10 million. Wow. And then there are surcharge and late payment fees and all of that stuff, just for not filing your GCT return. So, um, you know, and I mean, all of us aspire to get to that threshold level and to surpass that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, the need to have proper accounting. When we go to the bank and we can provide a set of financial statements, we can provide income statements, we can provide balance sheet, and we can provide cash flows, um, um, cash flow statements to our bankers. That determines the rate of the loan that we can get. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a huge difference between a 15% loan and a 5 or a 6% loan. And yeah. that is just because we keep proper records, yes. you know. And there are a number of other benefits that accrue to us in terms of, you know, just having proper records as we go along. Record keeping. Yeah. Nice. yeah. That song, that you don't preach a song, right? We've been singing that song. <laughs> Records are all different things, and now we even talk about records for finances. So exactly, that. and so many times. I mean, I mean, even if we don't have the know-how, you know, just keep our bills. Yes, but they fade. So the tax lady told us that we should scan them. Yes, photocopy them. Photocopy them and file yeah. them because yeah, they photocopy them and file them because that little piece of paper that you get after a while, there's nothing on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's that's the first thing that you do. Um, you know, and once you keep those, um, if you're paying people, your payroll can be done using your Excel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, that's that's something that I would use Excel to do. Yeah, and 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 that's why you know with the QuickBook, I wouldn't use QuickBook for my payroll system. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would use. Um, my Excel to do my payroll, and that's mm -hmm. easy. That's mm -hmm. a recurring, you know, you just put in your formulas, um, you know, your gross okay. pay, um, okay. you sub subtract your NIS and any um, pension if there is one, and you mm -hmm. get your statutory income, and, you know, your 25% of that, that becomes your, 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 your taxes payable, for your employees, and then you have your um, your NHD and the other deductions, and that that's that's something you know. If the government change the rate, it's just a change the rate in the formula, and it yeah. recalculates. So that is an easy one for for Excel. But the bigger ones to get your income statement, to get your profit and loss, to get your balance sheet, and to get your cash flow. Um, I say get one of the cheaper accounting package out there and you, yeah. yeah. Um, do you connect your bank to your QuickBooks? Um, no, okay. I don't. I don't. You know, um, I go online and basically just basically browse through my bank record online. Mm -hmm. But of course, every month I'm doing my reconciliation mm -hmm. because there are things that the bank will do that I would not pick up immediately. Okay. I have bank charges. I don't know what those will be. So therefore, I have to go on that. And when I see the bank enter those charges on my bank account, 
then I have to enter them in my quick books. Okay. Um, checks that I have written that the customer and cash does, when that happens, I go into my bank reconciliation and I tick those checks so that at the end of the day, QuickBooks will give me a nice bank reconciliation statement. I can sign that, sign off on that, date it, and I put it in a file. Okay. And so, and I also keep a electronic copy. So I have a copy that I save in QuickBooks and I have a copy that I print and keep a manual um, file of it. So I have enough backup. Very good. Very good. All right. So in terms of, let's go back to, are we making money? Right. What are some of the tips? What are some of the tips you would give us that I know some of them you've already mentioned. So you it's okay to go ahead and review that. What are some of the things you would recommend that we keep on top of to make sure that we can see whether we're making money or not? Because again, a lot of Jamaicans are actually categorized a lot of times uh we say oh i'm making money because they still have money coming in but they don't factor everything else that's leaving so what are some of the things we need to think about before we start going yes my man make money you know what are some of the things we need to make sure we're, we're covering covering all our bases in order to make that decision or make well that decision? basically well basically we need to um our expenses mm -hmm. um you know those are things that we use we we we, we need to look at and to make sure we're managing those properly. I mean, the price of feed is going through the roof right now. Yes. You know, yes. so we, you know, we have to look at things like utilization, wastage, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, the other one, theft. So we have to have systems in place so that we can basically, even remotely, um, know what amount of feeding we should have in storage mm -hmm. right and we have we can operate what we call a perpetual inventory system okay. so every time that we buy stock we enter it into the computer right when we use it we take it back out and at the end of the month we do a manual check to verify that what the computer is saying and what the manual um, figure is saying basically is the same. Um, if you're a small farmer and basically you are the one doing, you know, the feeding and all of those stuff, mm -hmm. or you and your family members, then you probably don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're employing persons, you know, then you need to put in the controls to make sure that you know people are away and, and let me tell you some people some people are very smart you know i mean i i used to be financial controller at a hotel and we had a room that was aged over 30 years mm -hmm. and of course when we were doing inventory you know we look at the bottle the bottle was at the level that it's supposed to be and we were like okay all right and we take it off and we have it. And then one month we decided, you know what, let's take it down. And let's look at the seal. Sure enough, the seal was broken. Oh, when yeah. we opened, no rum was in there. It was water. Wow. <laughs> I think Mr. Cook did it. See, he said water. Mr. McCook, did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was water. Yeah, and and I, I I mean I mean these guys these guys are genius. Mm. At sugar, when we used to work at sugar, we used to make again rum when I was at Long Pond, mm -hmm. and we are making rum. We are making rum, but yet still, when we check the inventory level of the rum, it's way below what we're making. When we did a detail check and we look, there was a pipe that was run underground for two miles. Yeah. And the guys had a bottling plant at the end. That they were bottling rum using Jerry and every bottles. Um, <laughs> big operation. They were making good money. <laughs> wow. So, so, so inventory management very, very important. Yes. Especially if it's not you or your family members. Uh -huh. 
Mr. Um, McCoy, he does it weekly. Wow. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, weekly. You know? Okay. Yeah. Be because you you will know <laughs> you will know the proportion that each animal is supposed to get. You know, you have your measurements and all of that stuff. And therefore you can tell without even have to be there physically what level of inventory you should have. You know, so that is some of the things, you know, managing your costs, your utilities, mm -hmm. you know, um people need to be you know, very aware, you know, if you're not in a room, lock off the light, you know, those kind of things, you know, um, where possible and you can now move off the GPS grid and, you know, do some solar investment down the road. That's, that's great, you know, because that is going to pay you back um, in the years to come. The initial outlay might be great, Mm -hmm. um, but down the road, you're going to get back, um, you know, that investment. So those are some of the things that I would say, you know, um, you know, um, customer service, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, try to build your customer base and keep the ones that you have, Definitely. you know, <laughs> um, you know yeah. be fair to people. Uh -huh. You know, and, you know, your recurring business is, is very important, you know, just, just as important as your new business. Yeah. Right. So those are some of the things that we try to do. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this feeding thing going through the roof, you know, it's how to manage that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, growing some nice animals. Mm -hmm. You know, and where you can, where, where possible, because what we're doing now, uh, we're trying to plant our own grass. Um, okay. You know, we have about two acres of land that we're trying to plant. Um, I, I tried to get some Mombasa seed. And I search, I search, I search. I got five pounds um, recently. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about trying to bring some into the island, but then I realized I have to jump over some hoops. Yes. You know, so I say, you know, uh, but luckily um, this agricultural store in Spanish Town here had some and I got some to purchase. So we are clearing land and we are trying to put that in place so that, you know, um, I don't have to go all over the place to try and get um, feed and basically um, you know, can just manage the the bag feed that is purchased for the goods. That's true. Anything yeah. you do to reduce your costs is definitely going to increase your Anything cost. to reduce the cost, yeah. Yeah. So, so here's a question. I'm actually going to put it for you and for everybody else out there. So I'm waiting to see how everybody chimes in on this question. How do you handle pricing your products? Mainly because... Every time somebody comes in, they're like, "Can you? What's the discount? What's my price? What's the discount?" <laughs> okay, so there, there are two schools of thought: at your price, and this is my price. You really want to say take it or leave it, but that's basically what you're saying: take it or leave it. Or if you know you want to be at this price, you put it up a little bit more. So when they say, "Oh, can you give me a discount?" you end up back where you're supposed to be. What do yeah, you guys I say? mean, <laughs> it's it's very challenging. So many, so many times, so many times, people do that. Um, I think for me, the important thing for me is the input. Exactly what am I inputting in an animal? Um, you know, so when I am able to calculate that, and then I can apply my margin mm -hmm. to that, then I am in a position to determine a price. Of course, in looking at that price, I would also look at you know, the prevailing marketing market price, mm -hmm. you know, and to see, you know, where I'm at in terms of that mm -hmm. and then make a determination, you know, or use that as kind of like a bargaining chip. So yeah. if I am able to produce at below what the market is, and that is something that we all aspire to do, to try and produce at below the market. Mm -hmm. And if I am able to do that, 
then I have that kind of leeway that I can play with and negotiate with somebody, you know, to, you know, as we say, meet us halfway, mm -hmm. you know. So that's basically, and that's why it's so important to have the proper records because I, I can trap one animal from birth all the way to when I'm ready to sell mm -hmm. and know how much money I've spent, how much money I've input into this animal. And therefore, I use that as a basis okay. to be really price. And, and that's what we do too. But inevitably, everybody walks through the gate and they're like, okay, so what's my price? Uh, your mm -hmm. price is what I told you the price is. <laughs> yeah. and you, get, you can't give me this stuff. Uh, that is a price. Right, so cost, cost plus. It's 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 a cultural thing. And it's always like you can give me, a, give me a family discount or give me you know give me something off or something. And it's 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 a challenge. <laughs> I will say it's a challenge because everybody's always looking for a discount. And I'm like, but I set it at a fair price. I figure out what my cost is, and you know factor in like what the margin is, and this is where it is. And it's competitive with what's going on in the industry. So yeah, that's your number, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. People are always looking for, for, for discounts and you know, I mean, you know, things kinda tough now. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, people even want more discounts, you know. But I mean, you can you as the farmer, you as a producer, you can only go so far and no more. Yeah. You know, and and you have to protect your investment, you have to grow your business. Absolutely. You know, um, you have expenses just like everybody else. Everybody else. You know, <laughs> you're in this thing to make money, not, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how we do it. I don't know if anybody else have anything else. I know. I'm waiting to see what everybody else puts in here. So, guys, tell me what you do. So, Natty Rob said, Nathan Rob, I'm sorry. Is that the same thing as Natty Rob? Are you the same person? I think so. Yeah. Uh, depends on the customer as well. That's true. You know, if you have a yeah. return customer, you do a little bit more. Um, yeah. If it's somebody uh, that always support, I tend to show love. Yes, that is so true. Yeah, um, that's exactly that's so true. But I like when people walk. You know, they drive. I don't know, two three hours, come all the way here, and then they're like, I'm like, you drove this far, and then you want once you get here, you're gonna tell me that. That's that's not a good price. You should have told me that on own <laughs> or find one in your price range. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it, it, it's a cultural thing. And sometimes it's hard to have that discussion, you know, but early. Um, <laughs> no other mm -hmm. that pricing thing. Go ahead, Kenneth. No, no, I was just, um, you said farming and I'm like business, you know, yes. overall people are, yeah. Business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, guys, any quite Oh, Kenneth, were you, what else were we going to cover today? Did we cover all your points today? Yeah, I think I think basically because, as I say, I never want to go too detail in, you know, like how to prepare a income statement, mm -hmm. you know, um, how do you classify your expenses, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of your balance sheet, how do you set it up in terms of, order of liquidity, order of permanence, and all of those. I'm lost. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I know. So, you know, I said, no, let me not, <laughs> um, you know, deal with it like I'm, you know, I'm teaching uh, a A-level accounting class or some students at university, but just basically just... Um, just to outline the basics in terms of what we do as accounting, as accountant, and basically the overriding principle, which is what we call the double entry principle. You know, that's something that we live by as a as accountants. You know, anything that we debit, we credit for the same amount. You know, so we say for every debit, there is a corresponding credit. And the word corresponding is very important before credit because we are saying if we put $10 on one side, then we need to put $10 on the next side. And we always keep this equation in balance. Mm -hmm. And then from that, 
we can prepare a number of um, financial statements. We can run ratios. And we use ratios a lot to explain and to tell us what is happening. You know, we have all kind of ratios that we use. We have what we call quick asset ratios. Like um, for us as in business, you know, um, our turnover ratio, very important. You know, I mean, people normally say in a Jamaican store, the Jamaican will price the thing out of the reach of the customer and it will dip, it will be there for six, seven months before one sale is made while the Chinaman would price it way down and therefore his turnover would be very high and he will make more money Absolutely. than the person who only sell one every six months because he's turning over the thing more rapidly, you know, and those are some of the ratios that we use to look at our business. And we look at industry averages too, you know, if the average rate of turnover of a pound of flour is 20 times for the day and we're only doing five, then we're in trouble. Wow. You know, so how can we turn over things much faster so that we can get that money and we can use that money mm -hmm. to build our business? So, yeah. you know. Quick sale, small profit, Nathan Rob said. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that that is so true. The green, well said. So that, that is so true is, you know, Get 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 it keep move, keep it, keep it moving and then you don't exactly. have any steel food like all the grocery store that your food is expired by the I mean by the time you get it that's because they keep it on the shelf so long. It's like exactly. you know. You know. Play it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, if I'm if I'm supposed to grow a chicken and deliver that chicken in six weeks, mm -hmm. and because of my pricing, I'm holding on to that chicken for eight weeks. I'm feeding that chicken two weeks extra. Uh, yes, that's one of the things we always explain. <laughs> when you it, you're, you're, you're incurring more costs. So you're yeah, just, you're I'm losing money. Down the road. <laughs> yes, very true. Plus, it's tough. Right. Well, that too, done. So the quality <laughs> is going through the window and all of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I need to move it. Yeah. So because of the debit and the credit, and if everybody else is like me, we don't like to deal with the debit and credit, we're going to go with software. And we, we're definitely saying software is the easiest way to go. Try to find a software that fits in your budget. Because again, not everybody can, you know, everybody's pocket is a little bit different. So for we can try to find a software that fits in your budget or... The, I like the idea that you get, gave maybe like five farmers can or five farms can get together, get one QuickBooks and everybody has access and everybody can use it and have their own user ID and password to their yeah. account information. So that's a yeah. nice and, and for those who are comfortable using the Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. I say use it, you use know. It. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what you have, that's better than not having any form of records. Definitely. You know, I mean, we're coming as accountants, we're coming where we used to have what we call ledgers. And these were books that we used to manually write in. <laughs> and then we have to post these from ledgers into what we call trial balance. And the trial balance is basically the test before we move on to the financial statements. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we put it in the trial balance and everything balanced nicely, we say, okay, we can now move to the next level and we prepare our profit and loss, our balance sheet, and our cash flow statement. So that's where we're coming from. Yeah. So, and the Excel was an improvement on that. And now software. You know? Yeah, and now we're at the software level. We're way up in the cloud. You know, we don't have to worry about buying servers and all of that stuff. We can, we can even do our accounts and our phones. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's I remember doing accounting in high school because I remember you talking about the debit and the credit and all that. I made it through, don't know how. And then I did accounting in my master's program, made it through that too. <laughs> and did enough just to get it done. But after that, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. Let me get yeah. some software to do this. But uh, lots of very, very good information. Does anybody have any questions? 
Any questions, suggestions, comments, anything while we have the accounting maverick on the line <laughs> to answer all our questions? So I did see a, a question and actually somebody answered it. And I thought it was one, it was a very good question too. I also like the answer. Let me see if I can find it. Somebody said, um, I'll go back and it said, basically if I have a software, do I still, if, I, if I'm using a software program, do I still need an accountant? What's the benefit of having an accountant along with a software program? So <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good question. And then actually Omar jumped in and I'm gonna also get your take on it too. So it says accounting software captures the information if you're not able to interpret the reports and data, then an accountant can help. So I did, I did like, uh, I did like that response. So you want to add to that? And give yeah. Kind of so, so it come back to the definition that I made: recording, classifying, summarizing. Mm -hmm. The the software will do all of that for you. And there are some softwares, and I think you might have some in QuickBooks too. That will analyze too, you know, um, will give you a number of reports in terms of your sales and all of those things. So you can know, you know, which month your sales are doing best and, and all of that stuff. So it does some amount of analysis, but there's still some technical things that you're going to need an accountant mm -hmm. to, 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 to do or to assist you with. What you probably don't need is a full-time accountant, mm -hmm. you know, because, like, for instance, there are certain transactions like entering invoices and things like that. Okay. You can enter those. I can stay from my remote location and I can view them once okay. you enter them. And if you made any mistakes, I can correct those. So basically the time that I would spend doing any work for you would be greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. And as accountants, we normally charge by the hour. And therefore, if I'm spending less time, then that's less cost to you. Yes. you know? yes. And then, you know, in terms of things like your reconciliations and those other finer details, then your accountants can do that for you. Yes. So, so the, having the software does not negate, the you know, having... Um, the way name the way we're now moving to teledoctors, you know. Um, the fact that we can do certain things online. I know, I love that teledoctors. Doesn't doctor. mean that we no longer need doctors, we still do. That's true. That's true. <laughs> another role of the accountant that I love. They file the taxes. Because I don't like to do taxes. <laughs> so I use my accountant to file taxes for me. So I give them access to the accounting software yeah. and they run all the reports and do everything and they file the taxes so exactly yeah yeah that's 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 one good use of your accountant yeah what would the cost for an accountant charge per visit um per visit what is per visit because as i said if i'm going to be traveling from kingston to montego Bay to do somebody books Mm -hmm. That's already mileage. I'm I'm gonna charge you mileage, mm -hmm. okay. and that could be significant mm -hmm. um, for a small entity. But if I'm online, where I can sit in my living room and I can do your accounts, there is no charge for transportation there. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that the accountant would be charging for is his time. And that's something that you can negotiate with an accountant and depending on the level of the accountant and, of course, the experience and all of that, some, some uh, you know, um, you can get some good, I can tell you, you can get some good students coming out of, what do you call it now, KIP, mm -hmm. A-level, we used to call it back in the days, who could do real good accounting work for you. Right, um, don't need to get that high price person to do your what we call day to day accounting. Yeah. That person come in at the end, like what Trudy mm -hmm. is saying. That person file your taxes 
and those kind of things, mm -hmm. you know, rather than that person being there to do the day-to-day -day, um, So even if the person is charging you $6,000 an hour, $5,000 an hour, you know, mm -hmm. an accountant charge more than that, some accountants, um, you are in control of the hours. You are limiting the number of hours that the accountant will have to spend doing um, you know, the necessary work and therefore you are limiting your cost as a result of that. What's the cost for preparing an SO1 and an SO4? But first of all, again, what's an SO1 and what's an SO4? Again, that's your tax return, Trudy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and that is going to vary depending on the accounting firm that you use. Mm -hmm. Um. I know somebody who is not that person freelance mm -hmm. and that person can do that SO1 and SO4 farms just as good or even better than a CPA firm. Okay. And that person rate will be significantly um, lower. And your SO1 and SO4 farm those are things that you probably can go online and just, just look at it. Just look at it and the way that they set it up now online, you know, if you make an error somewhere, um, you get an error message. Mm -hmm. You know, so you it's can significantly reduce your cost. You can save that cost there. Okay. Yeah. Do you think a lot of times if you call the tax office, you can call them and they'll give you, they'll walk through with you too, you know. So those are some of the things that you can avail yourself of. And, you know, if you have some youngsters who love the computer and, you know, are kind of accounting minded, good practice for them, man. <laughs> In no time, they will get it and, and, and they'll be able to do these returns for you. Um, on a monthly basis. No need for you to go out and get the expensive yeah. um, accountants. All right. So we don't have really a average cost for the SO1 and SO4? No? You, you're you not willing to? Huh? You don't have an average cost of what some, they might look at for an SO1 for, or an SO4? No, no I, don't, I don't have an average cost because as I say, you know, it depends on who you're getting. Okay. And the cost out there is, you know, they vary. They vary. So okay. I would say, hey, shop around. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, go online, see what basically this filing this return. Utilize the service of the tax office. Um, you know, they can assist you with it. Um, before you go and employ any. Um, high price accountant because some of the time it's just not necessary not necessary at all okay all right mr mccook is it hard to get through talk online to for the tax office is that what your comment is saying or when you call them carlton made a comment here for jamaican farmers to survive they have to start buying things together to get cheaper prices that's that's a very good comment, especially in light of feed constantly going up. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. And then going back to what we said, buy one software, quick book, exactly. yeah. users can use yeah. it. I'm good we could share it. We, we got to learn to share and work together. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to have to do. So, any other suggestions of of saving money or cost? Um, cannot just give us a bunch. You, know, you can go online and find your file your own S one and S O four. That's another good way to save money. Um, so, or find somebody coming out of school <laughs> that they want the experience and they're willing to do it. So they can definitely help you with that as well. Any any way that we can save money is saving money. So we're all about that. Any other questions or comments or Kenneth? Anything else you wanted to share with us? Um, not really. I think I may have said all that I pre was prepared to say, to say in my notes here. I'm looking at my notes and I think I may have covered um, everything. Okay. 
okay. you know but but you know i mean it's just to reinforce um you know for a lot of us the 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 accountant and the accounting we don't see it as that important mm -hmm. because you know but the value of it is really really important in terms of lowering costs to us in a number of areas mm -hmm. you know and i outline already you know you have a proper set of account in records and you go to your banker with that you're negotiating from a power strength you know um your interest rate is going to be much lower than somebody who don't have no records or mm -hmm. somebody who at the 11th hour um is running around trying to find somebody um to prepare some records for them to go to the bank next week yeah that person is gonna charge you a lot of money to do that yes because, because that that's still that person know that mm -hmm. you're in a, a little pickle and you want to get that loan you know so um plus you know it highlights and it tells you the areas of your business that you know are being run efficiently those areas that you need to you know um you know improve on the management um you know so um it tells you as i mentioned the 80 20 rule um there's a lot of benefits that you get from having proper accounting um you know exactly what is happening um on your farm you know what is happening with your inventory um you know you without even having cameras and all of that stuff well i mean you would know that from your day-to-day -day operation but if you're not there then you know exactly your animals how many animals you have if any is missing you know what is happening all of that stuff because you're counting records you know would be updated your 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 inventory you know all of that and that those are come some of the areas that as as farmers you can lose money mm -hmm. um you know somebody every day can steal two pound a your feed you know and at the end of the month at the end of the year it's a lot of money that you lose it is. It is. Yeah, so, yeah. I think my biggest takeaway reinforcement is um, analyzing each business entity, meaning what my sale from my goats are doing versus sale from the milk versus let's say even sale from composting or manure or what are all the different business ventures within the farm, analyzing to see which one is making the most money. Right, because yeah. like I said, you might be spending a lot of time over here and this one venture is not giving you any money versus this one over here. So you might want to allocate your time a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. I'd say that's my biggest reinforcement takeaway. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right. Exactly. Are, you, are you willing to share your number? Because I know a lot of people might our contact information or maybe email because I know a lot of people might want to reach out to you to ask you questions. Yeah, man. Uh, of course. What do I do? Type it. You can just type it in, type it in the chat, all right? Um, talk about the business plan, please. Um, you want to oh, he's typing his number in first, so then we'll jump into a business plan real quick. If you have time. I know he's he's has another call um, that he got off of to come on this call, and he's going to go back to it. So I don't know how much additional time Ken has, but, oh, I mean, I think I need to copy and paste it over here. Can I do that? Um, all right, I'll, t I'll type it in over here for you. Um, so do you have a minute that you and a little bit more time that you can talk about a business plan? How mm. that accounting might yeah. be deeper? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm gone over time, and I really want to get back to these guys. Okay, because as I mentioned to you, you know, it's about community development. Yes, Mr. McCoy, um, a whole different session just for that. If that's yeah. okay. And I'm, I'm typing his information in here. And uh, that Williams. 
I can't talk and type at the same time. <laughs> 38 at yahoo.com. Okay. Everybody see that? 876-841-3094. All right. Well, um, I'm going to let you run. I'll, I'll finish up with everybody else because I know you want to get off and, and get on the other call. And I do appreciate you coming off of that call, coming on here to work with us. I'm going to jump back on there. So, Kenneth, it's always a pleasure. And um, we will definitely keep in touch. And definitely, um, I'm waiting for my next puppy. I love my new puppy. Everybody, we have a <laughs> so cute. Thank you so much for spending your time with us as always. And um, we'll see you soon. All right. So all right, I'll take care. And then I'll finish up with everybody here. All right. Yeah. Thank you and so I think, great. And I, think, and I think one of these Saturday you need to bring your puppy. Bring it up him online. Oh yeah. my goodness. He is so much <laughs> energy. I don't know. I it's just kind of I'll, I'll show him and then I'll take him right away. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All no. right, take care. All right. Thank you, Kenneth. All right. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Um, you guys are awesome as usual. Oddly added, going to bank requires clearance from different tax entities, and a lot of farmers fail to keep records. So this should be an eye-opener to farmers. Absolutely. I mean, we've been talking about records forever. So hopefully that we're all this information is sinking in. And guys, we have a whole community here. So any one of us you can reach out to. We're more than willing to help you um, to help you get on track to with your record keeping. There, of course, there's Kenneth Williams. He has his, his contact information. You have our contact information. We have Mr. McCook. I think o Staten. Uh, anybody else that you're willing to throw out your information out here for anybody? If you have a lot of information, I think Omar sounds like he is on the ball. Not, I, I'm, I'm making assumptions here. So again, anybody who you're willing for anybody to reach out to you. Oh, this is a good time to add that we started a group on iGoat Chat, an iGoat Chat group on Facebook. And part of the iGoat Chat group is to have a mentorship program. So if you're willing to either mentor or be a mentee, please feel free to join in, come, in, come on over, join our group and let's start the discussion. The main thing that we ask is that you are respectful of each other and it's all about sharing information and sharing ideas, okay? So make sure that whatever you present, there's context, context and value, right? So we wanna you know, grow as a community so we can help each other and let's see what else. Very informative, thank you. Cabra do you sell wieners? We will talk to you offline. Okay, so Connor, message us, uh, um, message us directly and we'll definitely talk to you about that. Thank you, Natty and Kent Howard and everybody for joining us, Mr. McCook. Did I forget anybody else? You guys are awesome. What's the accountant's number? 876-841-3094. Um, Let me do this. There you go. All right, so here's his email, his email and his phone number. All right, you guys are awesome as usual, and we look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place. Everybody have a great weekend. See you guys, and those in the U.S., happy Memorial Weekend. All right, thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye.